you very much for coming out. We appreciate it. Uh, welcome to tonight's Candidate Forum. I am Patrick Linderbray. I'm the senior producer of the Macomb Cable Network. It's a shared service of the City of Mount Clemens and the Mount Clemens Community School District. Our program this evening has been sponsored by our own Mount Clemens Cable Communication Commission. I want to take a minute to introduce them real quick. Our chairman, Judy Armstrong, who's in the back moving people around back there. Uh, Jenny Emmerich. Diane Kish, James Kopis over here, and Mike Schichtel, who is going to be our timekeeper this evening, and Ray White, who cannot be with us this evening. I also want to thank a big shout out to my producer, Darren, who does tirelessly work for the city and the residents and has a very dedicated employee for everybody around here. I also want to thank Brandon Bowman and the staff of the library for hosting our event this evening. And I'm going to begin by introducing our candidates for mayor. We have Barb Dempsey, we have Laura Kropp, and Christopher L L Luckritz, excuse me. Our candidates for city commission, Ron Campbell, Rashida Hammond, Glenn Forhees, and Kathleen Kelchner, who could not be with, with us tonight. But I will be reading her opening statement and her closing statement. Uh, each candidate will have one minute to make an opening statement. Uh, we, we will ask every question to all candidates. Starting with um, Ron, working way down, we will go then to Dot Barb for the second question, Rashida, so on and so forth. Um, you will have one minute to respond to each question. We ask that the candidates do not address each other during the program. Around 7.40, 7.45, we will quit taking <coughs> new questions and we'll go to our two minute closing statements for all of our candidates. Uh, for the audience members, there are index cards for you to submit questions to us. Give them to one of the cable commissioners and they will collect and screen them. Uh, we ask that all questions be directed to all candidates, not any one specific candidate, and we will reject any that seem to be ill willed or accusatory. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that in mind, we will be, we'll start the fun, as they say. Uh, and we'll start with Mr. Ron Campbell. You can make a one minute opening statement, sir. Okay. Hello, my name is Ron Campbell. Uh, as your commissioner, I have always voted for what is in the best interest of the city. I have voted for stronger blight and rental ordinances. I've worked with the mayor, my fellow commissioners, and city administration during very tough times, economic times, and we delivered balanced budgets and we maintained essential city services during the recession. And that has kept us from financial disaster. Our home values have increased ensuring our biggest investment and in our asset here in the city. I have enjoyed helping residents with issues from having trees planted, blight issues, tax questions, and I will continue to do that as your city commissioner uh, if I am reelected. Thank you. I'm oh. sorry, Bob. <laughs> I hope you want me to. No, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> Good evening, thank you for hosting this this evening and uh, Brandon, the library, thank you for hosting this. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Barb Dempsey. I pretty much grew up in Mount Clemens uh, since the age of eight. I graduated from Mount Clemens High. My sons went to school here and um, I've lived pretty much in every part of the, the city throughout my uh, lifetime here. I look forward to building upon the momentum and the progress that we have uh, recently experienced as an elected official, I have worked with our professional administrators and other elected officials to lead our city through some difficult times. With the patience and support of residents, we have addressed the financial challenges of operating the city on, to, on the day-to-day -day basis. Drive through the city and you'll see new homes on Crocker, Powder Coat, uh, North Rose, and General Trailer on North River have all expanded their operations along with Concord Tool on Grosbeck. Exalta has invested 25 52 million, excuse me, um, in their operations. Development of recreational resources, such as recent improvements at Shadyside Park and construction and new universal access kayak launch at MacArthur Park in Clinton Town and on Clinton River. These are all major investments that have been made within the last few years in the city of Mount Clemens. I'm running because I believe that there is a meaning through service to our community. I'm blessed to be part of a community that, oh, that not only has a great history, but a bright future. My years of public service has taught me that there's never an easy solution to problems or challenges that we are facing. Today's challenges at times are overwhelming, but I'm committed to the, to the success of Mount Clemens, and I believe in the future of the prosperity of working through the issues that we are facing as a team. It is up to all of us to continue to build upon the strengths of our city. Thank you. Thank you. 
First, I would like to thank the Mount Clemens Cable Commission and the library for this opportunity and the residents for attending this evening. My name is Rashida Hammond, and I'm a longtime resident of Mount Clemens. I'm currently employed, employed as a Macomb County Head Start teacher. I was born, raised, and educated in Macomb County, and I come from a local family that goes back four generations in Mount Clemens. I received my bachelor's degree from Baker College in early childhood education, and my master's degree from, I'm sorry, my master's degree from Concordia University in educational leadership. I'm an active member at Greater Morningstar Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm also a member of the River Acres Community Organization. I'm a mother of three children, and I enjoy spending quality time with them here at Mount Clemens. And because of my passion, perseverance, and hope for the city of Mount Clemens and its residents is what have called me to public service, and I will work to create a more promising future for the city and its residents and serve as your city commissioner. Thank you. Um, first, I would like to thank the um, Cable Commission and the library um, for hosting this evening. Um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for, our, um, for, our, for all residents to hear from all of the candidates that will be on the ballot this year. Uh, good evening. My name is Laura Kropp, and I'm a candidate uh, for mayor of Mount Clemens. My family and I have lived in Mount Clemens for 18 years. My husband and I have two boys, Jack, 12, Mr. Photographer up front, and Miles, nine years old, who's in the back. Uh, my husband, Paul, runs our thriving business, Bakes and Crop Fine Cabinetry, that's located here in Mount Clemens. I'm running for mayor to help Mount Clemens move in a positive direction. I'm committed to ensuring that every neighborhood has fair representation on city boards and commissions that the mayor appoints. I will work to find and encourage interested residents from diverse neighborhoods and backgrounds to serve. Recreation programs for all ages need to be brought back to Mount Clemens. We need to create a plan for our infrastructure needs. Our roads and water services need significant investments. Money that I know Mount Clemens doesn't have in our bank account. Roads and water are too important to just kick the can down the road. The time is now to plan and then implement our short-term goals so we can eventually achieve our long-term goal of Mount Clemens being a community that we're all proud of. Thank you. Chris. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Chris Lockritz, and I am the candidate for mayor of Mount Clemens. Our downtown is the heart of our city, and a healthy heart is essential to life. Right now, Mount Clemens' heart is ailing. Downtowns are iconic and powerful symbols for a city, containing the most recognizable landmarks, distinctive features, and unique neighborhoods. Our downtown area is one of the oldest neighborhoods citywide, offering rare insights into our city's past, our present, and our future. When something goes wrong with your heart, you know it. You make the necessary adjustments in your life to do what needs to be done. You need to make it healthy again, and we have not done what needs to be done. I am the only candidate that will bring change, transparency, and revitalization to the city. By focusing on bringing new business into the city, thereby easing our tax burden, and working hard to win federal and state grants to increase the upkeep of our ailing home, making sure we have a strong heart so the rest of our city can not only survive, but thrive. Thank you to the Mount Clemens Public Library and uh, Cable TV here for hosting this town hall, putting it all together, and I look forward to answering the questions tonight. Thank you. My name is Glenn Voorhees. I was born June 22, 1951 at St. Joseph Hospital here in <laughs> North Avenue. Didn't move very far from there. We went up to Canfield and then Elizabeth, and then uh, you get married to somebody who lives in Seminole Hills, and then you move to Seminole Hills. <laughs> so, so I, um, I have been, um, I was employed uh, by the First National Bank in Mount Clemens for some 25 years before it was sold to Old Kent, and then subsequently Fifth Third. And I have about 30 years experience in the financial services industry. Uh, I have served the city of Mount Clemens since the age of 20. 
on various committees and uh, commissions. I started out with the Traffic Safety Committee, then moved to the um, Planning Commission. From the Planning Commission, I moved to the uh, uh, Mount Clemens City Employees Retirement System, and then the Board of Review. We can all be proud of our retirement system. It is the number one in the nation. Uh, we are 100% funded. And this is through uh, the efforts of our committee and also the citizens of Mount Clemens because you contribute to that retirement fund through your taxes. I uh, served uh, on the uh, Mount Clemens Community School District for four years, finishing in December. I was uh, trustee and treasurer for the first three years. When I went on the school board, it was two and a half million dollars in debt. When I went off in December, subsequently in January, we are now out of debt, zero. So that's a good thing, sign for the school district and a good sign for the city of Mount Clemens. I'd like to thank the cable network and also the library for hosting us this evening. Thanks again. Thank you. I will now read uh, Kathleen Kelchner's opening statement. Good evening, my name is Kathleen Kelchner and I'm running for city commission. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming out to meet the candidates for the 2019 election and apologizes for not being able to attend this evening. Unfortunately, she had another commitment then she was unable to reschedule. She would like to begin by telling you about herself. She was born in Mount Clemens, raised in Chesterfield, and returned to Mount Clemens after getting married. Her husband and her have been residents for this, in the city for over 21 years. She has a bachelor's degree in accounting and an MBA with a concentration in project management. She has more than 20 years experience in the construction industry, and for the last three years, she's been a full-time real estate agent. Her decision to run for city commission was driven by the desire to be a new voice for the residents of the city of Mount Clemens and to help advance their community. She intends to accomplish this by continuing to promote the beautification of the city, supporting the growth and revitalization of the community, and continuing to encourage all economic growth, as well as residential growth for all ages within the city. And that was from Kathleen Kelchner. Okay, we'll begin the, with the lights. <laughs> <laughs> My reading wasn't that bad, was it? It wasn't dramatic, I'm sorry, but okay. Uh, the first question will begin with Mr. Ron Campbell. We will work our way down the table. And for with one minute, um, why are you running for office? I'm running for re-election because I have, over the past several years, the ability to help residents when they have called in with questions. I had one last night. Someone didn't understand. They wanted to know about some tax situation. I was able to tell them who to call. I, Helping people that don't have the ability to get a hold of somebody, I've always enjoyed that. Um, I have taught government for the last 25 years, and as I tell the kids at school, teaching government is completely different than how it actually works. <laughs> so I just had some ideas when I initially ran to strengthen the neighborhoods because our homes here are our biggest asset. And as your home values go up, your assets uh, increase so I had several ideas with regards to blight ordinances and working with the mayor and city administration we were able to implement some policies that have helped strengthen the neighborhood um, is anything perfect no but things have gotten better and uh, I'm glad that we've been able to see some of these things come to fruition and I would like to continue on the Commission so I can help residents and continue what we started. Uh, we had some very rough times during the recession and we were able to maintain city services working together and I would like to continue doing that. Thank you, Ron. Barb? Well, like I said, I truly believe and I have for over 30 years, I've uh, spent my time in the city um, volunteering for various uh, organizations. I am very committed to the city. I belong to a number of groups that uh, helps with the preservation, that uh, we also do um, so many other, like the Anton Art Center, the uh, Cracker House Museum, uh, the train station, all those um, that we have here in the city, we need to continue to make sure they thrive. It's our history. 
I believe in our history. I believe in um, committing myself to working. I've worked um, hard for years just um, between city commission and being on, I started out at the recreation department, which I truly believe was a gem for the city, and hopefully someday we'll be able to do something again with that. Um, but I think in order to live in a city, you have to commit yourself. You have to belong. You have to do things. You can't just, you know, let the day go by and not really give back to your community. And that's why I'm running again, because I truly believe in this community. This community has moved forward so much. And like was said earlier, we've gone some, through some very tough times. And we survived. We didn't get the emergency manager that was sitting in Lansing waiting. We survived. We worked as a team. And if we can continue working as a team, we will see the city progress more than it already has. So that is why I am running for re-election. I want to see that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. Rashida? Yes. Because of my passion for Spirits and Hope is why I'm running for um, city commissioner here in Mount Clemens. Um, the seeing the improvements in the neighborhoods, um, increasing home ownership, reducing blight, and enforcing rental property ordinances, also increasing community work resources. We once had a parks and recreation program. I would like to see that um, come into life again, along with um, thriving businesses in the downtown area to see um, revitalizing the downtown area. I would love to work diligently with the other um, city officials, uh, the mayor and the commission and the city manager. And those are reasons why I've decided to run for city commission. Thank you, Laura. Um, I've decided to run for mayor because I believe it's time for to approach a lot of the issues in Mount Clemens from a different point of view. Um, I believe that my skill set uh, from being a small business owner, from working in a bureaucracy of a school district for a long period of time, lends itself to working in a municipality. Um, my time on the city commission, um, I've learned a lot about how municipalities work and how um, how things uh, proceed and they take a while to come to fruition. Um, I also have learned a lot about our history um, and I, I too respect that, but I also am not seeing the planning for the future of what Mount Clemens wants to be in 10 years or what Mount Clemens wants to achieve in the next six months to one year. And I believe that we need the leadership to drive the commission to make and set those initiatives so that the city managers then know how to proceed um, and how to lead our, um, our city. And so I believe that I have the skill set to achieve that. Thank you, Laura. Chris? Well, it all started back in June. My wife and I were biking downtown. And it was about 7.30 on a Thursday night, and we were going around. And I was like, I don't see anybody down here. And it's a Thursday at 7.30. So we're like, you know what? We're hungry. Let's stop in Three Blind Mice. We stop in Three Blind Mice. And you know, there were two of us in there. And it's a Thursday at 7.30. All right. We wait around. We get something to eat. The scotch eggs are awesome. If you haven't been there, so grab those. <laughs> but we're looking around. Another couple came in about an hour later. We did it again on a Friday. We went out there. We went to a couple different places. That's it. It was empty. And I said, you know what? Like, I've lived in Mount Clemens for six and a half years. And I've only seen Barb's name on there. And she really hasn't had any, any competition. And if you delve in, she has over the time. And, and she's served very valiantly over, over her career. But I said, you know what? Everything's stagnated. And sometimes it takes the eyes of a non-politician, someone that's in the community, down there, down there on the ground floor, walking around, looking around, going, you know what? Hold my beer, watch this. Let's get this done. Thank you, Chris I'm running for, for the City Commission to continue um, uh, to try to improve our city. My experience on, on the several committees that, you know, the Retirement Board and the uh, uh, Board of Review, I'd like to move that forward to the City Commission. Also, my period of time on the uh, school board. Uh, this, I know they're two separate entities, but they do work together. And I would certainly would like to see um, a much stronger 
bond between the two of them and also uh, a commitment to not only our downtown businesses but we you know there's businesses that are up and down north and southbound Gratiot, Grospec, Crocker Boulevard all of those businesses need our help so you know when you're when you're going to out to to have dinner Paco the taco on you know Crocker um, you know there's there's a lot of places that really need our support if they get our support they will stay in business so that's I want to move that expertise to the City Commission table before the next question, if you have any questions that have been picked up, just raise them up. One of the cable commissioners will come by and collect them for you. So if you had one written down, just go ahead and have, put it up. One of the cable, cable commissioners will collect it and bring it up here. Uh, we'll start this next question with Barb. Uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the city of Mount Clemens? Uh, well, there's a couple. Uh, I think the biggest challenge, of course, is our infrastructure. Uh, our streets, our local streets and what's below them. That is our biggest challenge that we have. Um, one of the other challenges I think that we have is we need to establish some, and I'm, I'm gonna say affordable, uh, senior housing. You know, we have so many people in this community that want to stay in the community, but we don't have anything for them. You know, they, they want to have a place that they've lived here all their lives, they want to stay, they want to end their lives here. And they end up going to Clinton Township and everywhere else because we really don't have any senior housing here. We have the high rises, don't get me wrong, we have those. But there are certain people in town here that want to stay and downsize. And they want to go maybe into a condo or maybe into a smaller home. So I think that's a challenge for us. We, need, we don't have a lot of land, so that is going to be a challenge, but I think that's something we definitely need if we want to preserve, quote, the history and these people who have spent so many years here and want to stay here. So that will be a challenge for the commission and the mayor to uh, be able to find and be able to do that. But still, our greatest, even though our financial structure is doing fairly well, we still aren't getting our money from the state and shared revenue, but our infrastructure is 200 years. We've been here 200 years old. Yes, we've repaired some along the way, but like every older community, underneath our water, our sewer pipes, and our local streets, and there is no federal or state money for that. So that's going to be a big challenge for this community, an older community, Roseville, East Point, us, going north of us, they don't have those challenges. Mm -hmm. It's dry, hot and dry here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, one of our biggest challenges, I agree with the um, aging population within Mount Clemens is the seniors and having resources for them and being able to support them. Also, another challenge I find is the um, property income tax that we have um, within the city, which is 40, about 42% property tax, that's tax exempt, I should say, within the city, and having that income coming in. So finding um, additional resources for income to come into the city to support the city um, financially. Thank you. Laura. Um, I agree with um, both Rashida and with um, Mayor Dempsey that um, finances and aging infrastructure are an issue. Um, and I believe that's why I think planning is such an integral process that I think we're lacking in the city. Um, to be able to say, this is how we're going to address those needs in, in a timely manner. Or um, and if, if, your, if your house, I always use this analogy, if your house has a roof that needs to be repaired, and you don't have that um, those finances in your in your bank account at this point. You have to come up with a plan for that, and um, you have to seek resources. You can't just say, "Well, I'm going to live with a roof that's caving in." Um, and so, you know, I think at the city level, that's what that's really what we're lacking, and what we need to really concentrate on. Thank you, Chris. Ooh, where to start? <laughs> All right, so we have. <laughs> we have a lot of stuff that needs to be put to the top of the top of the list unfortunately 
you know, one uh, the finances is one of them, uh, older infrastructure. But uh, what I've been harping on is if you look at the revitalization of other older communities, because yes, we are an old community, but you know what? We're not the only one out there in the United States. There have been examples prior to that that have been able to replace their infrastructure, have been able to redo, you know, rebuild their downtown and start from there. And that's exactly what all of these communities did. Well, Detroit, right down the street from us, is a prime example. They started with the heart of downtown Detroit and they're working their way out. Granted, Detroit is much bigger than we are, but, you know, it shouldn't be as hard for us because we're smaller. But if we can fill those buildings downtown, that will alleviate the tax burden off of our citizens. And at this point, too, <laughs> I've seen the blight report, and it just seems that between that and that and the, the parking meters downtown, that we're just trying to fill the city coffers on the backs of the people that really can't afford it. So, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Go on. I believe that the. Um, the, the problems that we're going to face, uh, the infrastructure and senior housing, we need to have, when I worked in the bank, we had a five-year plan. And that plan was developed with stakeholders. Uh, you, you're the residents, the employees, um, uh, everybody would be involved in getting that plan started. Then what you do with that is you turn around and in the first year, you, you look at it again and see if, are we, are we meeting our goals? And then you would continue uh, out with the five years. If we don't have a plan, we plan to fail. So we need to have that. Ron. Uh, well, being the last one, everything's been said, which I agree <laughs> with. <laughs> but. One thing that it's very different being on the inside because over the years the state has continually reduced revenue sharing to the city which has then placed a greater burden on us the taxpayers so I see the greatest challenge being the reduction in state revenue sharing that has come to the city which leaves the burden on us to then decide how we are going to fix our problems we did it uh, you know during the recession we made it through and we will make it through again but as I said the biggest problem is the state revenue sharing has constantly been reduced and until we have fair revenue sharing from the state we are always going to continue to struggle thank you uh, my next question actually goes in line with one of ones from our audience here uh, we'll start with Rashida. What is your vision for the downtown and how will you work with the DDA to get new events, better advertise our events and spur traffic downtown? We have a wonderful downtown um, area here in Mount Clemens. Um, the waterfront is fabulous. It brings in, I think, a lot of opportunities. Uh, one new event that we had over the summer was with the um, jazz concert, which um, was the beginning of something great with bringing in um, additional conference, I mean concerts, along with, um, I'm sorry, just a little nervous. Okay. Okay. Good. Take some water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First time on camera, I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yes, okay. With the downtown area, um, advertising. I think a lot of it has to do with advertising and bringing in new businesses. Um, large businesses, small businesses, because we are a smaller town. So um, supporting the small businesses in the city and the business owners, um, again, as advertising, um, increasing foot traffic in the downtown area and um, capitalizing on the waterfront. Thank you, Laura. Um, I would like to see Mount Clemens, um, not to beat a dead horse, I would like to see Mount Clemens have a strong economic development plan um, that actually seeks out businesses to come to Mount Clemens. Um, I think it's really encouraging to see um, the, the art spaces program that is being developed and the potential of that bringing more people. So thank you to the Anton Art Center 
and um, the steering committee uh, for for working on that because um, we have a great potential with every revitalization of other cities like um, Mr. Luckert's brought up um, it it always starts with an artist movement and so I'm excited to see that um, the the art art spaces come in and we need Mount Clemens to be we need to create buzz about the downtown we need people to realize that uh, Mount Clemens is a cool place to be I know that does not make me sound hip to somebody who's in their 20s or 30s but I'm gonna use the word cool um, I think that we need to become the we need to become the buzz of of people wanting to seek us out and in order to do that uh, we have to do some things differently and bring people who we have to utilize our own downtown but we also have to bring new people to downtown to see how great it is and um, so I um, have spent four years on the Commission building strong relationships with many of the business owners that are currently there and they are really excited to um, give input to the city and and try some new things um, they they want so badly for our Mount Clemens of course they're so invested um, so they want Mount Clemens to be as successful as we do as residents so um, I'm really excited about uh, getting 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 to work on that. Chris. A lot of people, when you talk about big business and small business, you say, hey, you know what? I want to bring in a Starbucks. And everybody goes, oh, Starbucks. But if you look around just in, in our general vicinity, Ferndale, Rochester, uh, Royal Oak, they all have Starbucks. They all have McDonald's. They all have companies that are national that did the legwork for you. They have multi-million, multi-billion dollar advertising budgets. They have apps where if you're driving down 94, it's going to blink and be like, hey, there's a Starbucks right off the highway over in Mount Clemens. Someone will pull off that highway, take a look at it and go, hey, look, you know what? I'm going to grab something to eat over there at Mace. I'm going to go to Bass City Bistro. Oh, what is that? A death museum? That's pretty cool. I'm going to pop in there and then they're gonna mark it on their phone. And that's what, we are a small community, but we're not anymore. We're not Elmont, we're not Cadillac, where you could see the city limits, where you're driving through and there are the cornfields and then you hit it and it's like, boom, there's a city. No, man, we're part of a megalopolis that goes from Port Huron through Mount Clemens all the way down to Detroit. We're not that small community that we're kind of stuck in that mentality. Our city limits are fuzzy. We have to be able to get all of those people to come in here. We can still have our little downtown, that's awesome, but we have to start bringing in those corporations that are gonna work it hand in hand with our local businesses and everybody's gonna prosper then. Thank you, Chris, come on. The, um, I, I, to try to bring people into or businesses into Mount Clemens, we're going to have to work with the landlords. Um, you know, we can't, somewhere along the line, this is not Royal Oak and you can't charge Royal Oak rents. Uh, in order to, to get businesses to come into the city, you have to lower the rents so that you can, that they can occupy, um, you know, those offices and, and storefronts and operate profitably so i think uh, whether it be the dda or, or whoever whether it be city um, manager they need to discuss this with the business or the landlords of those um, sites thank you glenn run um to make the downtown successful the city does have an economic developer we do have a, a downtown developer uh, downtown development uh, coordinator to bring in events I mean can it be better yes um, but things are taking place the people here are in city administration has worked uh, with the county to try to improve things remember the county owns a good portion of the land downtown and they don't pay any taxes on it so that is a problem so uh, the city administration has tried to work with the county uh, there are some projects that are underway that are helping is it going to happen overnight no uh, but things are happening and uh, it uh, downtown um, 
as I said, a city will survive on its own, but a downtown will help make it better. And I believe the downtown, uh, with the projects that are underway and the economic development, a developer and the coordinator will continue to help improve things. Thank you, Ron. Barb. Well, I, um, I think first of all, we have to be positive about our town. And we need to speak about our town positively. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook, but if I wasn't in Mount Clemens, I wouldn't come to Mount Clemens if I checked some of those Facebook pages. Why would we do that to our own community? We live here and we bash our own community. It's beyond me, I can't. But anyway, things are happening and it does take time. Children's Hands-On Museum is here. Eight years we worked on that. We didn't give up. We knew we could do it, but it took us a long time. So that's here. The art space, art space is an international group out of Minnesota. We went through phase two. We were able to secure some money with some help from DTE and other places to go through phase two of the study. They did a terrific report about Mount Clemens. That report will be available shortly. And when you read that, I hope all of you will take a look and see all the good things we have going here. But phase two is ready to go. We secured the money to do phase two. So it looks really promising that we're going to be able to bring this to Mount Clemens. Farmer's Market, we've been working on it for three and a half years. We haven't given up on it. We are within two, three weeks from hopefully getting the financing that we've been looking for to do this. All those things are positive things in this community and it's all positive for the downtown. Now what we need to do is we need to get the developers who own the buildings to be reasonable in selling them to people who want to put businesses in there. Developers are here to hang on to the building until they can sell it for whatever they can sell it for. They're not here to put businesses in. And we need them to understand they can't sit empty as long as some of them have been sitting empty. And we have put a ordinance together which will go in effect next um, year in 2020 that will put some pressure on the developers to either put a business in there or sell it to somebody who wants it. And so we need to be positive. It's not going to happen overnight. But look how long it took the Children's Museum, the Farmer's Market, the art space. Those are all positive things for this community. We haven't been sitting on our hands just getting up every morning and saying, oh, what can I do today for the city of Mount Clemens that I can't move it forward? You know, I live here. This is my community. And the commission works hard and administration works extremely hard. We work with the in order to continue to bring uh, money into the city, the Michigan Economic Development has money that they will help business owners. The county has an economic development department that we work with and our own economic development. And believe me, when we talk about Starbucks, does anybody think we haven't tried? Okay, thank you, Barb. Thank you. Laura. How would you address the uh, lack of recreational activities for our young people and our senior citizens? How would I address that? Okay. Um, recreation, I believe, is um, such a service that we're lacking within our community. Um, I have two boys, as I mentioned earlier, and we, um, we had, we, they go to Little League in Harrison Township because we don't have a Little League here. And, um, and so we, they met a group of they met a family um, a few oh, about a year ago and we realized that the family lived around the block from us but never really met them until we met them playing Little League in Harrison Township and now my kids ride their bikes and have Nerf gun wars in my backyard um, if we don't address the lack of recreation in our community because so many of our kids don't attend schools in Mount Clemens our kids are not going to have the roots that we're used to, they're not going to have roots in this community. And that's a fear of mine. And so I really think it's a priority. A well-run recreation program can bring revenue to our city. Um, there are many examples of that within our area. Roseville, East Point, um, New Baltimore, 
cities who are not exactly wealthy cities, but they're running active community um, recreation programs that are, that are um, models that we can use. And so we don't have to, um, it's not gonna take, it'll take an investment in the beginning, but I do believe that there are resources out there to help with that investment. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Chris? Uh, recreation in the city definitely needs to be addressed. Um, as there are quite a few parks everywhere, they are uh, kept up pretty well, but we can do better with that. Uh, if, you, if you go around to the other communities, Shelby, Macomb, Clinton Township, the, the parks there have modern equipment with uh, the squishy ground. I mean, I, re I remember growing up with the, with the wood chips and you just <laughs> you made sure that you didn't fall off the monkey bars. Anyway, so we gotta make our kids safer for that one there. But ultimately it comes down to we gotta get the money. Where are we gonna get the money from? Well, the city of Mount Clemens, we need to grab a grant writer. And we need to get one of the best grant writers available. We gotta put it out there and see, see what we can't find. Because from working with the DOD and working with the federal government, I know the money's out there. You can go get it, but they're not just going to give it to you. You have to go ask for it. And that's how we're going to fund those, those recreation programs. Maybe uh, take a couple of swaths of land, switch them over to, uh, to fields and ballparks, soccer and whatnot, and then we'll get the money through grants through the federal and state government. Thank you, Chris. Glenn. I, too, believe that we need to uh, kind of resurrect our recreation department. We have a beautiful recreation center out on Grossbeck Highway that um, I know that there's some classes that take place there, but um, I, I think maybe with improving the parks that we have in, in our neighborhoods, uh, we can maybe deal with not only grants, but perhaps a collaborative effort with businesses and corporations that they too would put some funding in if we named the park after them so uh, we have to kind of think outside the box on the recreation area but funding is going to be a, a big problem thank you Glenn. Ron uh, the best way to revitalize a recreation department <laughs> is uh, two ways partnering with other communities and working with the community groups that will, are within the city. There's the foundation that has helped uh, revitalize the parks in the city here. They're absolutely beautiful, fixing them up. But the best way, because uh, once again, anything can be fixed as long as there's the money. Well, where's the money gonna come from? So the best way is partnering with other communities and working with the community groups within the city to help promote the programs that the community wants. Um, we have about 11 we have 11 parks in the city of Mount Clemens most of those parks um, have been redone with new equipment or uh, like Shadyside we just uh, put in almost I think 150 190 thousand dollars we are building a soccer field uh, out behind Washington School which um, should be done hopefully by next spring and again, that was in cooperation with uh, the works from our grant writer that we have. Um, and we have baseball leagues during the summer. The fields are filled, both for little league and adults. We can partner, possibly, with Clinton Township, just like Roseville did with East Point. They could no longer sustain their own recreation departments and senior um, uh, recreation, so they combined. We could do that if Clinton Township is amenable. I see nothing wrong with that. Um, Thank you, Barb, it's time. Thanks. Sorry, I know it's I okay. talk too much, right? Sorry. <laughs> I am all for the Parks and Recreation Program, being a mother of three children and having that in the um, community. Not just for the youth, but also for um, families and the seniors also use the parks and recreation, um, could use the park and recreation program. Um, the issue with that is the funding, which we all agree, but having the funding for the parks and Re recreations program and partner part partnering with another organization to help bring that into the city. Okay, thank you. We'll start with Chris for this next question. Um, how would you address the growing needs of our homeless population, our homeless residents? 
That's a tough one. Why are you going to give me the tough one right All off right. the bat? Everyone, everyone gets to answer <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I mean, definitely that, you know, it, again, if you go to Facebook <laughs> with, like Barb brought up, you think we are just inundated with homeless people. They are just hanging out all over the place. And they are, and they are some of the nicest people that I've ever met. So, <laughs> They are, they are some, some are, there are some bad apples in there, but you know, there are some people that own houses that are bad apples. So what we do is we, we do have to partner with the, the county and the state and try and figure out how we can go ahead and get a little bit more shelter here for them, give them something to do. Um, that also then will tie into bringing more businesses downtown. If they have something close by where they can stay, some type of shelter and they can walk to a business where they work at downtown, then that's gonna help keep them off the street. It's gonna bring up their self-worth and they're gonna be uh, productive members of society, again, like we all know that they want to, so. Thank you, Chris. Glenn. Our homeless uh, population is, um, thank you. you know, we're, we're the county seat and, and thank you very much. We're the county seat and, and uh, uh, lots of times the resources are located here, but, a, a big problem, and I, I spoke with um, a young lady from the Salvation Army, um, the big problem is mental illness. And it, it, this is a real uh, uh, problem that I don't know that we can, we can address. I think it's got to be picked up by the, by the county um, uh, and, and uh, and some of these other organizations that we have um, in Mount Clemens, such as Salvation Army and, and McRest and a few others. But um, mental illness is a real problem there. Thank you, Glenn. Ron? Uh, as Mr. Voorhees just said, we're the county seat. All the services are here. Um, as a consequence, the homeless population here, we're not the only one that has it. But working with the county is going to be the way to help solve this. It's not just the city's problem. It's working with the county to help alleviate it. Thank you, Ron. Barb? The homelessness we have, we have to kind of define it. We have, we have homeless people that do have the mental illness that don't need or want the help from anybody. Then we have a population that re needs the help and wants the help. And the city of Mount Clemens, Macomb County, there are many agencies that these people um, who are homeless can go to. For instance, the Ray of Hope. This year, I think I saw in the newsletter that they had like found homes and um, work for a dozen people. Uh, the county has many, thing, many um, programs to offer. All of the churches in Mount Clemens offer food and clothing for the homeless. Salvation Army offers for them to wash their clothes, to take showers. So it's sometimes it's a situation where there are certain people that are homeless that want to be homeless. And they will gravitate to community like Mount Clements because we I have a, the Gratiot trunk line. They can come from Detroit all the way to Port Huron think how many cities are in between that they have a nice downtown that they can go to or the churches that help feed I really think that's a bigger problem it's a bigger problem Mount Clemens can solve we need to bring the um, faith-based community together we need to bring the county to the board and we need to bring the state and we to the together to see what everyone can do Mount Clemens alone is not going to solve this problem it's time Barb thank you thank Rashida. you <laughs> I think we can most agree that no one wants to be homeless and the issue as we all pretty much agree on that it's mental illness and um, the drug issue that's causing the homeless and finding the community resources that there are a lot out there and they are seeking it from the Salvation Army and the local churches but finding assistance from the county to also assist with Mount Clemens to fight the um, homeless issues. 
Thank you, Rashida. Laura. Um, there is an entity, um, well, there are several entities in Mount Clemens, as Mayor Dempsey was mentioning, uh, McRest, the Macomb County uh, Warming Center, um, that are quite large entities that um, help with the homeless. And I recently learned about the Macomb County um, Homeless Coalition that tries to take all of these entities and unite them. Um, from one of the members of the coalition, it sounded as though they could actually use somebody who leads the group to say, you know how how are each of you working in this puzzle of because it, it really is i mean it actually reminds me of a special education classroom in terms of every person is so unique and has a different situation so each entity is going to service these people differently and so um i think that uh, as a mayor or as the city um, it would be great if we could help lead that coalition and um, and help put those players into um, kind of an organized manner to so that they're not double um, you know helping the helping the people but instead um, spreading out the resources and using them in an efficient manner thank you <clears throat> we'll address this next question to Glenn first and uh, how would you address blight enforcement most specifically with the guards to rental properties uh, blight enforcement question? needs to be um, kind of universally done. I, I, I think that sometimes um, um, the enforcement is done in one area and not in another. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we universally take care, of, you know, address the blight issues that uh, are in Mount Clemens. Commercial and residential both they both need to be looked at um, the second part of the question uh, Patrick, the Second part of the question uh, especially in regards to rental properties. I believe we we have an ordinance on the books and I'm, I'm not uh, in favor of overloading uh, Regulation, but I think if we have it on the books, then we need to enforce it okay. Thank you Rod uh, within the last few years the commission we have worked together the mayor city administration to implement a rental density ordinance and empty building ordinance and while new the uh, effects are starting to be seen so the like you said you don't want to over inundate with the ordinances but the ordinances that we have put in place are going to be helping the situation and uh, um, you don't want too many ordinances. So the, the ordinances that we have put in place are the ones that are going to be working the best. Thank you, Barb. That's true. We have implemented uh, the last few years uh, some stricter ordinances. We have two blight people to cover the city, four square miles that we have. Um, and I don't know if we specifically, I mean, I know you said renters, but you know, I kind of look at the fact that we also have homeowners that have issues also. So to, to kind of, you know, point out to renters, I'm not so sure, so sure that's fair because I think the city blight officers don't go down the street saying rent, home, or you know, they look for blight and they, up, they uphold and, you know, um, the ordinances. However, it's a, it's a sticky sword because we get complaints because they're doing their job and we get complaints they're not doing their job. So it's like, okay, <laughs> which way should we go? But the ordinances are on the books. I think they're uh, doing a good job and Thank I think in the next year or so they will continue. Thank you, Rashida. <laughs> yes. For improving, um, well, improving neighborhoods and reducing blight and neglect in the neighborhood is by a I think is increase in home ownerships and there's a lot of programs out there for first-time homeowners that I believe more citizens can be aware of in Mount Clemens of purchasing a home because sometimes renters are not aware that these opportunities are available for them to be able to be a first-time owner and there's help out to help out there to assist them another thing is that I know the city does work with um, for with Greater Morning Star on um, church they have worked with the city to tear down um, 
homes that are abandoned in the neighborhood in partnership with um, different homeowners, businesses, um, community resources, as in churches, to help with the blight in the neighborhood. Thank you, Laura. Would you like me to repeat the question, or are you okay? No, I think I'm good okay. now. <laughs> um, I think part of the issue that blight lends itself to is a perception issue, an outside perception issue of Mount Clemens. There are so many people that drive down our thoroughfares that are not residents of Mount Clemens every single day. They take casts in and out of Mount Clemens. They take northbound and southbound Gratiot, and they see weeds in our streets. They see buildings that aren't painted. They see signs where there aren't businesses anymore. And I think it lends itself to exactly what we don't want people to see of Mount Clemens. And so I really think that we need to, as a city, work on enforcing our thoroughfares and the ordinances that we already have but really concentrate on an enforcement of those thoroughfares because in order to get to the root of the issue is that it's pride and it's expectations if you drive through other cities the businesses are held to an expectation of how your building should look and i believe that we really need to work on those we have some businesses that have beautiful buildings who are putting up sculptures they're doing great things but then we have some people who are not. And so I think those thoroughfares sh could really impact this perception issue. Time, thank you. Chris? A little bit, so I agree with every candidate that's up here. And one of them is the unequal enforcement of the blight. Uh, when it comes down to the residences, I've been working with Gina and uh, we've, been, we've been helping in the community cleanup there, getting out to these houses that they all have been tagged for blight. And perhaps we should put in something like a, like a double jeopardy clause on there because some of these people that we've met, through no fault of their own, uh, medical, medical issues, hospitalization, they can't get out there and they can't fix their, their house. They can't fix it up. It's not that they don't want to, they can't. And they keep getting tagged, but I had a couple houses down the street from me that I never saw any notices on the, on their on their door at all through the six years that I've been there, and it's ugly. But of course, the guy across the street from me, he got he got tagged. I don't know every two weeks because he wasn't he he didn't cut his grass. You know why he didn't cut his grass? He was down in in Florida because he fell off a roof and broke his back, and he tried to explain that to him, but nobody was there to listen. So. We definitely have to take a look at more, more equal enforcement of blight throughout their communities, but ultimately it comes down to the downtown area where more people are going to see. Uh, people aren't going to drive down Euclid. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. We will go back to Ron. Um, how would you address the strained relationship between the school district and the city? I define strained <laughs> because I think that uh, the relationship between the city and the school is better than it's been in many years. Uh, the boosters, uh, many of the commissioners have gone to the, the games, uh, have promoted the district itself. So I don't see it as being that strained. Okay, thank you, Barb. I kind of have to agree with Ron on that. I don't uh, really see uh, when you talk about being strained, um, we are both separate governmental en entities, so we can't tell each other what, we're, there sh what we should be doing or you should be running the school this way. But again, it's the community has to get involved, and we are involved. I mean, I sit on the Drug Family Coalition. That's through the school I'm there for the meetings. I'm there at the school. Um, so I, I go to the reading. I read to the kids at the elementary school. They had a big clothing uh, uh, giveaway and change and every. Uh, um, I, get, I can't remember the name of the group, but they came out of Rochester. At Seminole, 500 students they clothed, they gave books to. I was there. So I, it's, to me, I'm not, I don't see the strain with the school district, but you have to be involved. You have to be there to see it. You have to get involved with anything. And so, I, I, again, I don't see it. I'm involved. Um, I go to the school. I see what goes on, and I guess I don't see that as being strained. Yeah. Thank you, Rashida. 
One way to assist with the um, school district is um, being more involved, um, serving on the school board, volunteering. Also, I see the connection with the city and the school. Because if you're thinking about moving to Mount Clemens or to any city, you always look at, okay, if I have children, where am I going to send them? And if they look at the school and see that the school is not where they will expect it to be, that they may think twice about moving to the city. So I think that the school and the board also will continue to work together for improvement of the city and the school. Thank you. Laura? I think there are many opportunities, and I, I think to look at it that way instead of it being this strained relationship. It's, um, you know, we've had many superintendents come through Mount Clemens and many changes of guards, and, um, and I think it's an opportunity. We have um, Superintendent Davis right now who wants to work with the school district, I mean, wants the school district to work with the city, and I think no one necessarily is saying no way. I think we just need to further that relationship, good communication with the school district, promoting each other's events. But I also think a step further in looking outside because the school district doesn't have the resources that many of the neighboring school districts has, like a CTE program, career and technical education. We have nothing in the school, but we have several CTE programs within our community. We have uh, plumbers, we have electricians, we have, um, and we need to make those connections with businesses that could take on student internships even in our downtown businesses could have co-op students who come in um, I mean there are opportunities to think outside of the box and link the school district with the city I think that those are those are great opportunities for both entities thank you Laura Chris uh, from from everybody I've talked to so far perhaps in the past the relationship was strained but as of right now, it, it's, it's doing all right. Um, you know, as candidate for mayor, I'll, I'll shoot a shout out there right now to put us together. Tomorrow's the final home game for the Bathers. Everybody come out. It's the first time they have a chance to make the playoffs since 1994. So there's that right there. But if those lines of communication do get closed, uh, you got to open them back up. And one of the best ways to find that is maybe call them up and, and discuss some stuff over a burger and a beer. And then usually you come. <laughs> <laughs> you come to some type of decision on that, so. Thank you, Chris. Glenn. Once a bather, always a bather. <laughs> I, I, the relationship with the, with the school board uh, or the schools, I think, has gotten much better uh, over the years. We have a very cooperative superintendent. And I think the school board, uh, having just come off of the school board in December, uh, we realize that we need to work together. We are two separate entities, but we need to work together. We are Mount Clemens. Thank you. And we'll start with Barb. Um, what do you see are the city's strengths and what do you see are some positive signs on progress? In the city of Mount Clemens. Well, I think the strength, I've always said this before, the city's strength is its people, its residents, its history. I mean, and I think the positive things, like I've stated before, look what's happening in town. Look what's going up all around us. I mean, you go down Crocker, you have three new homes down there. In Mount Clemens, they built. You know, you go down uh, Cass Avenue, um, there's new buildings, um, a new complex there that has been built. You have the Children's Museum coming in. You, you've got art space working. You've got a kayak place. You've got it down on the river. You've got, you know, the soccer field coming. You don't realize how much you have in this community until you go around. There's something for everybody to do. And you have all the other amenities that a larger city has. You've got the Krakow's Museum, how many have been there? The Anton Art Center and all the programs they bring. The library has done an excellent job in all the programs they're bringing. Thank you. Just stop for a minute and take a look around your city and see what you have. Thank you. There's a lot here. Thank you. I agree with Mayor Dempsey about the downtown area and what Mount Clemens has to offer. Um, that's one of the... Um, biggest opportunities that I think our city 
does have to offer is our downtown area, including the waterfront. Um, the artwork that we see here in the city is um, fabulous, and also that it's just not there once. It changes throughout the time, and I don't know if everyone had the opportunity to view all the new artwork that is here, even though I miss the horse outside of Shadyside. <laughs> 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 I just thought that was absolutely fabulous to be going into the park. Another thing is the parks. We have a fabulous parks here in Mount Clemens, and to be able to utilize those parks. I don't even have to leave my neighborhood to go to a park, and that takes me right onto a bike trail. So I just love the parks that we have here in the city, and also the many different events that we have, the fireworks. I've been going to the fireworks since I was a little child, and that I can still attend the fireworks today with my children, and also the concerts that we have downtown. Thank you. Laura. Um, I think, too, the downtown is one of our um, greatest assets. We have um, cultural experiences down there with the art center being the hub and um, all of the new art popping up. But I also think we have to think about the downtown um, as this great opportunity that so many other cities are trying to build what we already have in terms of infrastructure. Um, I mean, I don't know how many fake downtowns I see popping up that, um, you know, that's why we need to really utilize ours and um, bring people back to Mount Clemens. There's no reason that Mount Clemens can't be Macomb County's downtown. Um, I really um, also feel um, that our waterfront uh, my husband and I uh, and the kids are, um, are boaters and we love to be out on the water and we have so many friends who say, you know, bring back all of the fun things that Mount Clemens used to do on the water and, and boaters will come. And um, there, that I think is an underutilized resource that we have. Thank you. Chris? Well, we have been making great strides in, in redoing our downtown and bringing people in there. And, you know, the, the art is one. Uh, Phil's doing a great job with the Anton Art Center, making sure that, that we have culture moved around. The, the Children's Museum is another thing that's coming in. That's going to be awesome in order to bring in, you know, children and their families. Unfortunately, we need to put stuff around it. We need those buildings filled so that when people do bring their families down here, they have something else to do because we are competing with, with children's centers in other cities, at Great Lakes Crossing, in Detroit, in Ann Arbor, and all of those places you can go and make an entire day there. Um, and that, that does you know, go right to the, the vacant non-residential uh, ordinance that was just passed. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, I would definitely go back and take a look at it because at $1,000 a year, some of those buildings have been sitting around for 15, 20 years. <laughs> and $1,000 isn't going to hurt anybody, and especially those pockets right there. I would have gotten a lot more aggressive on that, and perhaps we can go back and take a look at that and revisit it. So, Thank you, Chris. Clint. Oh, sorry. sorry? By, far, by far, Mount Clemens' uh, biggest strength is the diversity of its people. We have, we have everybody here. And, and um, believe it or not, we all get along well. So, <laughs> so uh, that is our, our biggest asset and our biggest strength. Thank you. Ron? Well, <clears throat> I agree with every, what everybody said here, but this year, uh, our last year, Mount Clemens celebrated its 200th birthday. We have a history here that no other community has in Macomb County. That makes us unique. Another thing is our housing stock. The reason I live here is I love my house. I love the houses in this city. They're not cookie cutter, they're unique, and that's what makes Mount Clemens strong and why I wanted to live here. Okay, we're gonna move forward now with our closing statements and we will go in reverse order and we will start with Mr. Vorties. I made the, the decision to run for the city commission because I felt that our city is, is, is moving forward and we need to keep it moving forward. And um, I can bring to the table 20 or 48 years of experience in working with the, the, the many different commissions and committees in the, in the city. Um, I, I hope that um, the, 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 my car, 
When I was on the school board, we always made sure that I ended my comments with, once a bather, always a bather. I printed my cards and I said, you know what, once a clumite, always a clumite. <laughs> and, and, and people say, you know, what does that mean? I said, it's a feeling. And you know it. And it's the pride in this city and it's a pride in its people and it's, a, it's pride in its employees. Uh, it's pride in, in uh, when you come into town and you've been away for a while and you see it says Mount Clemens City Limits and it gets you in your chest. So that's why I'm running for the city commission. I love this city and I want to keep it moving forward. Thank you, Glenn. Chris. Revitalization of downtowns and central city neighborhoods is challenging. They can be gritty, cranky, often struggling, and contentious, but they're always exciting. They are the hotbeds of business creativity, neighborhood activities, nonprofit entrepreneurs, economic diversity, and attraction for visitors, for seniors, and for young talent. A square mile of downtown property generates more than twice the county and city taxes as an average square mile in the city as a whole, and more than three times the county tax revenue when compared to the same amount of land. To all of you here in the crowd tonight, or watching at home, now is your chance to make the change that we need. I'm the only one that will bring that change. I chose to run because I have grown to love this city and our community and I'm the one that's going to revitalize it. You can bring in a fresh perspective by voting for me on November 5th. And also, if you didn't know that we do have open voting or early voting on November 3rd, you can go right down in City Hall. So thank you everyone for coming out tonight and watching and have a good night and drive safe. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just add a disclaimer before we, we don't have open, open voting on November 3rd, but you can um, register to vote on November 3rd and turn in your absentee ballot on November 3rd. So, oh, sorry, we second, November 2nd, Saturday. Sorry, early second, early. Saturday. Yeah, it's okay, so, but you can't vote early, but you can turn in your absentee ballot and you can register that day as well on Saturday. Okay, so closing statement, sorry about Thank that. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's really important. We'll Thanks. <laughs> Um, I look out at the crowd tonight and see so many different people from different backgrounds. I see people who have lived here their entire lives. I see people who have bought their first house and just moved to our community. And everyone, I believe, should have a voice in how Mount Clemens moves forward. And I hope to lead that voice because I've been the person who is the new person in town but I've been the person who also is super, super passionate about leading Mount Clemens to be something that represents all of us and that everyone can be proud of. And I believe that I have the skill set to help lead everyone to do that. It will not be one person who moves this city forward. We can't, we, no one person can move this organization. And so I would love to be the person who helps lead us to celebrate all of the businesses that are in Mount Clemens and sing from the rooftop all of our accomplishments from each resident. And so I thank you all for coming tonight and for listening to the broadcast and for the cable network from hosting. Thank you very much. I wanna thank everyone for coming out this evening. As a city commissioner, I will work with other city administration to help improve neighborhoods and reduce blight and neglect by increasing home ownership and enforcing rental, prop rental property ordinances. I will increase community resources by implementing skilled trade, vocational and job training programs and allocating more funding for parks and recreation activities. And I will work to revitalize the business district by opening the doors to thriving businesses downtown and supporting the small businesses owners and attracting new businesses and increasing the foot traffic. Mount Kent Lemons is a city that I love. So I ask that you stand with me because together we can build a promise of future for the city and its residents. So vote November 5th. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, first off, I have to admit I'm not a Clemnite. <laughs> you have to be born here, I heard, to get that yeah, you title. Be born so, here. <laughs> unfortunately, I can't claim that title. Um, I think tonight a lot of things have been said, a lot of change, uh, a lot of things that people want done. It all boils down to the money. Folks, it boils down, do we have the money to do everything what everybody wants? What we need, we have priorities. City administration has done a good job in prioritizing our budget. We have moved forward. There has been a lot of progress. I said that tonight when I pointed out all the things that are coming into town, that are here in town. But the whole point is we have to have to also work together. You have to take pride in your own town. And by taking pride is that means go downtown and, and shop, go eat downtown. You know, walk on the riverfront, come to city commissions, tell us what you want. We're looking at, uh, looking at finding a um, public relations firm to help us get the word out because everybody says, I didn't know this was going on this weekend. I didn't know this was going on. Tell me where you look for that information because somewhere along the line we may be missing. We do everything we can on the internet, the paper, the, the posters, the Facebook, you name it. But if we're missing something, we need to know about it. But that's progress, folks. You have to tell us. What do you like about the town you live in? Ron says he likes his home. Most people I've talked to, the new people have moved in, they say they love their house. They love the house, the affordable housing. So, you know, progress is here. It doesn't happen overnight. And I'm more than willing to continue to work on all those committees I have served in the past to bring it forward. So vote for Dempsey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, first, I would like to say I have been on the commission, and it has been an honor to work with my fellow commissioners, the mayor and city administration. Uh, have we always agreed on everything? No. But we have worked as a team, and that has been a great honor to do that. I have loved helping residents when they have called me with issues. Uh, when anybody has ever called me, I went in right away, talked to the city manager, the mayor, whoever it might have been who can help the resident. I've, that has been a special thing that I've liked to do. Um, the mayor said the progress is taking place, and it is. Uh, many of the people up here tonight have complimented on all the things that are taking place. So thank you for that. Um, I will continue to work in your best interest as I have done as best as I could and I ask you for your vote so vote for Ron Campbell thank you I will now read Ms. Kelchner's closing comment she again apologized for not being able to be here this evening but she wants to thank you for coming out into the Meet the Candidates Forum. As a resident of the city for over 21 years, she is dedicated to the community and the growth while not losing its history. We have a beautiful city that should be shared with the residents of our neighboring communities. While she does not have governmental experience, she does have the credentials to great leadership experience. She served at the Metro Detroit Chapter of Construction Financial Management Association Board of Directors for seven years as Vice President and Secretary. She has led projects and managed teams throughout her career in construction. She volunteers and supports local nonprofit Kids on the Go, a program which her nephew participates in. She supports Macomb County 4-H and Macomb County Habitat for Humanity. While she does not have children, she understands and recognizes the importance of education and supporting the children in our community. She had an opportunity to, if you have an opportunity to talk with her, you would hear her say, What's, uh, what is the win-win? She believes that while we need to move forward, we need to remember where we came from, where to learn and grow from those experiences. That type of thinking is what motivates her desire to be the new voice for the residents of Mount Clemens and to help advance our community. She wants to share the beautiful city with others, the revitalization of the community, and to see economic and residential growth within the city. In the last six months, she has seen more families moving into our neighborhoods, and this is exciting, and what our community needs to move forward. She wants to be a part of that team and make it happen. She wants to ask for your vote for city commission. She wants to wish you a wonderful evening, a very safe and happy Halloween. <laughs> Let's have one more round of applause for our candidates. I promised Brandon to do a couple quick commercials for him.
<laughs> there is going to be a community conversation Monday night here in the library, discuss the vision of Mount Clemens and how the library can help. They'll be renovating the children's area, and they'd love to have your thoughts on ideas and what facilities and services can offer to improve not only the library but the whole community. Come by on Wednesday, October 30th for Donuts and Cider Day. That sounds wonderful. Tin foil sculpting on Saturday, uh, November 2nd in this room. So that's check out the library, go to the Facebook page or their website. Um, thank you very much for coming out this evening, and thank you for your attendance and for your questions. Thank you to the candidates. Good luck with your, with your uh, campaigns, and register to vote, and we will see you on Tuesday, Thank November. you, Patrick. Uh, why are you running for office? Um, I have decided to run for city commission uh, to be the new voice for the residents of Mount Clemens. I've lived here for the last 21 years and uh, have decided that it's time to step up to the plate and be part of the community and be part of the team that helps bring our city into the next generation. What do you see as the biggest challenges or challenges facing the city of Mount Clemens? Um, I think we have s several challenges that we need to overcome. Um, I, th I think that um, Focusing on finding a way to improve our, um, our homeless situation um, is definitely something that needs our attention. Uh, we have a lot of people in the community that, being the seat of the county, um, we've got some different challenges there. And I think that that is going to be, I don't think that it's something that will be impossible to overcome, but I think that it will be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, what is your vision for the future from the audience? Uh, how will you work with the DDA to get new events, better advertised events, and spur foot traffic downtown? I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question? What's your vision for the downtown? The vision for the downtown? My vision for the downtown is a vibrant downtown community that um, brings people from neighboring communities and um, boats coming up the river, docking on our riverfront, people in, you know, coming into the community to spend an evening or maybe a weekend. Um, shows, you know, we've got the Emerald Theater, some different venues there in town, um, having, um, and people wanting to come to Mount Clemens. We have a lot of people who come to Mount Clemens, the outskirts. Um, and when I say outskirts, I mean not the exact downtown area. Uh, I'd like to see more of that in the downtown community. Uh, as far as working with the DDA and, um, I'm gonna make sure I answer the rest of that question. Working with the DDA and promoting additional events, I believe was the rest of that. Um, I think that um, the DDA does a good job, as of right now, to promote events in our downtown community. Uh, and I think that as our economic growth occurs in the downtown area, uh, the businesses will help support one another, would be my goal, would be that the businesses would play off of one another to help promote events and different things that would encourage people to come into the community. So. How would you address the lack of recreational activities for our young, young people and our seniors? Uh, I th think that we are making strides um, in bringing back our recreational activities for our youth. Um, we have the um, Jermaine Jackson Center. Um, there are other things that I understand are forthcoming that um, will help promote and bring back that those activities. Uh, I do think that we need to do something more for our seniors um, and would hope that in conjunction with the, the recs bringing back our park and rec, we would also be able to bring senior activities to the community. You mentioned it before, how would you address the growing needs of our homeless residents? So I think that, um, I think that there needs to be some studies done. Um, right now, people, the, the homeless gravitate to where the services are. And so if we take the time to determine the demographics and establish services that can help 
um, help those individuals. And um, my construction experience, I've had a great opportunity to witness other communities that have worked with their homeless population and been able to, through grant programs and different funding sources, provide services for those individuals. Um, potential for subsi subsidized housing. There, there's all kinds of different avenues that can be explored, but there's definitely some research that needs to be done as to making that happen. How would you address blight enforcement, the most speci or more specifically enforcement in regards to rental properties? Um, well, I definitely think, I, I, I support the fact that we need to maintain a standard within the city. Um, as far as um, specific to the rental properties, I believe that would be part of, that, that's part of court enforcement as far as um, I am concerned. It's something that um, other communities enforce and, um, and we need to be doing the same. How would you address the uh, strained relationship between the school district and the city? I think the only way to address any strained relationship is to open the doors of communication. Um, as, you know, again, my approach to everything is, here's the facts. We, no, not everyone is always going to be happy or satisfied with every response um, or every outcome. At the end of the day, the goal would be to find the best win-win situation for all parties involved. And the only way to make any strides or improvements is to actually sit down to the table, open the doors of communication, and try to find that win-win solution. What do you think is the city's greatest strengths? And what do you see are the most positive signs that there's uh, positive movement in the city of Montana? Oh, I think that we've got a wonderful city. Um, we've got a fantastic downtown area. We've got the riverfront. Um, we've got so many different, um, it, so much history in the city. Um, I've lived here for 21 years for a reason. Um, I would, um, I'm sorry, I've, the last part of that question was, what, it, what are the greatest attributes of the city and? Positive signs. Oh, the positive signs of progress. Uh, look around. Look at the people that are moving into our city. Um, we've got economic growth going on. We do have economic growth going on in the downtown area. Whether we realize it or not, it's happening. Um, as a resident here in the city, uh, seeing families in the si last six months, um, I've seen more families moving into the communities, kids out playing, riding their bikes. Uh, those are things that I've, in 21 years I haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, that tells me that we are headed in the right direction and um, we're growing our community. And that, that's what we need to do if we want to continue the growth of the city. Um, absolutely. Mm -hmm.